This is our idea, our Guru Dev. He often spoke like this. He would take something completely transcendental, existing on the highest plane, and try to show some connection between we sadhakas and we conditioned souls. Once Prabhupada was giving a tika on the tenth canto on the Kansa Mardana, Kants, Kants Mardana, in the very early chapters of the tenth canto, Krishna is born in Kants' prison house in Mathura, Devakinanda, that is. And then later Krishna came for a wrestling match and he defeated the wrestlers and killed the wicked, demoniac, tyrannical, treacherous. Rakshash, the king, Kants. So Prabhupada is writing tikas. So this is a pastime of Krishna that took place 5,000 years ago in Vrindavan. And Prabhupada in his commentary, my Gurudev, he said, Kamsa was harassing all the Brishnis. He chased all the family members of Vasudev and Devaki and Krishna. He chased them all out of Mathura Mandal. They were hiding in caves in fear of that wicked, demoniac king, Kamsa. And Kamsa was killing the cows and, and chasing the Brahmins and stopping their yajna. He was an enemy to the Brahmins, an enemy to the cows, an enemy to Krishna's family. He was such a wicked, demoniac king, Kams. So he, Krishna went and killed him. And Gurudev, when he's writing his tika, he's commenting on that and what it meant. And he said, just like today, just like today, my disciples and the Krishna devotees the worshippers of Krishna, like Vasudev and Devaki 5,000 years ago, and like the Brishnis and his Parivar 5,000 years ago, who worship God, and they worship cows, and serve cows, and did yajna, and they were doing all this puja then. But just like then, my disciples who were trying to worship Krishna and protect cows and serve cows, like the Brishnis, they're being harassed. They're being harassed and arrested and persecuted by the Kamsa-like kings and leaders of the modern world. This is an example of taking the ancient Shastra and the ancient Leela and applying it to the modern context, even down to the level of the sadhakas. This is my Gurudev's expertise to make the ancient alokic thing somewhat even rele uh, relevant to the modern society. That's one of his distinguishing qualities of his tikas. Following in line, Guru the Shishya, then we take this phrase, Jagokala Manoharam, we find Manoharam. Cause, Jagokalam. The cause is Krishna plays his flute. And what's the effect? The Vamadrisham Manoharam. The gopis, their minds become attracted. Their hearts become enchanted. Their hearts become stirred and filled with romantic, amorous desires to please, dance, serve, embrace, kiss Krishna in the Ras Lila. So this is Manoharam. So Krishna's flute is a Manoharam Murali. Manoharam Jagokalo. The Jagokalo the lakshan or the characteristic of Krishna's flute is its mind stealing. Krishna's flute is mind stealing. Manohar means mind stealing flute. And man means mind or chit or heart, sometimes in Sanskrit. Krishna's flute sound, like Kamabij, transcendental Kamabij, stole their mind, stole their hearts, stole their lives, stole their hands away from their domestic duties, taking care of their husbands, cooking, serving, dressing. Their hands pulled away from all those activities, their eyes withdrew from looking at their own bodies, their dressing, brushing their own hair and decorating their own eyes, their hands and vision and attention withdrew from even their own bodies and their own body decoration. What to speak of their vision and hands withdrawing from their service to their children and their relatives and in-laws. And everything was focused on Krishna. Their five, their panch karmindriya, their panch uh, gyanindriya. All their senses and mind became manoharam. All the senses merged in the mind, man, and the whole thing was stolen. Their senses, their body, their mind, Jagokalam, Manoharam, he stole everything. Therefore, Krishna has the power of Manoharam, and Krishna's flute has the power of Manoharam. Krishna is a thief. He's glorified throughout the Vedas. When he was a young baby, he was a thief. He stole butter, and he was glorified as Makancho. Then he grew up a little bit, and he grew up a little bit. He went to the riverbank and he stole the saris of six-year-old girls in a very playful, prankish, funny way. He laughed and giggled and they laughed and giggled. It was all child's play. They were six-year-old girls bathing the Yamuna as was the standard for ladies to bathe naked in a secluded place. 
the mothers and the daughters. And the daughters were there doing Katyani breath. So Krishna came with his coward friends. He had a few toddlers with him in the tree. Some young boys were with him. And it was all good-natured fun, as children often do. Boys and girls play together, and there's no impropriety. No one raises eyebrows. No one makes any criticism. If a three-year-old boy or a five-year-old boy, three-year-old, five-year-old boy plays with a five-year-old girl, right? So the girls are six years old, and Krishna says, hee, 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 hey, come on, boys. Let's take their sari. <laughs> this will be fun. Oh, Krishna, we can't do that. If they come out of the Jamuna, they'll be shivering and they'll be cold. It's winter time, and they have no clothes. Oh, it's it's fun. It's a game. Let's go. Okay, let's go. The boys get together. They take the girls' saris. They run up at the tree and they go. We go. Oh, where's our saris? And that's called Gopi Vastraharna. Again, Krishna's stealing. Gopi Vastrachur. Then Krishna grows up, becomes a young dashing. Darling youth, Kaishor Rup, Kishore Krishna, Navayovanam. And then he starts stealing the hearts of the beautiful go-eyed gopis. The Vamadri Manoharam. He starts stealing their hearts with his fun and play, with his looks, with his glances, with his flute, with his sporting, with just his general presence in Vrindavan. He stole their hearts. So this is showing the power of this Manoharam. And now... Krishna's flute has the power to steal. Krishna's leelas have the power to steal. 